Hey, welcome back to Polysthetic. In this video, I'm going to show you an example of how to use C sharp threads. What I'm going to do is simulate that typing text effect you would have seen from my devlogs, and it's a pretty common effect. Now, using a C sharp thread for this application is a bit overkill, but I think it's a nice demonstration of how you can use these tools to do something a little more complicated. All right, let's switch over to the script. So, just for clarity, this is the end effect. Okay. So all I have is just a 2D scene with a label underneath it. So let's detach the script and we'll attach a new one. The first thing we'll do is let's assume that our label might be set from some external piece of code. So we'll make it a public property type string and we'll call it a final text to get her to set on. And we'll just initialize it here. Place it with the text. I'm going to be using a thread. So we'll create a reference. We'll call it the typing thread. We won't initialize it yet. Now, Godot doesn't allow us to block references with external C sharp threads. I tested this earlier. What we can do is create an intermediate variable and in the process function, assign the text property of the label to our intermediate field. So we'll create a private string, we'll call this current text. And let's create the method that we're going to thread. The most efficient way to do this is with a character array because the once we set the string, that array will be fixed in size. So we don't need to use a string middle or anything like that. Create a private char array. When we start the type of effect, we'll initialize this. And the size of this would be the final text length. Okay. Now I just remembered I want to add a blinking underscore. So increase the size of the array by one just to account for the underscore. And here. We'll write the if character is equal to the final text. Size character. So we're just copying from the final string to our character array. Okay. And then our current text will assign it a new string from the character array. Now we don't want this to execute all in one go, there'd be no effect. So what we're going to do here is going to ask our thread to sleep for some amount of time. So I'm going to create a constant here. Call it uh, typing delay. And we'll say 50 milliseconds. It works in milliseconds. Oops, that should be a void. Now let's test this first. So on our ready method, we can consider this to be our client code, but in a full application, something else might invoke the thread. We're going to assign typing thread to a new thread. To initialize a thread, you need to pass it a method of reference through a thread start object. And in this case, uh, the reference and the typing effect, that's our thread. And all we do is we start it. So typing thread dot start. During the process function, we take the text property that's um, intrinsic to the rich text label, which this script inherits from. And we assign it to the current text. Or rather, we assign the current text to the text property. Yeah, well, it finished quickly, but we didn't um, give it a bit more text. So let's try that again. Now, if we're lucky, it might crash, but uh, maybe the program is too simple to crash. There is something important that I didn't do in the code. You can let it type out, maybe it crashes. But what's important here is anytime you're dealing with threads and you're accessing some shared resource, in this case, this is our current text object, it's important to lock it. Now, just in case this current text field is being written to one thread and being accessed in the other. I don't know in this particular case, this will happen. 
because the strings are immutable, but I have encountered crashes in the past row when I don't lock variables. So this is important here. So just to be safe, make sure you lock any variables you're using. If you want that blinking cursor effect, let's go back to our typing effect method. And for now, we'll create an infinite loop. Our array final text.length. It might be a good idea to introduce a field here. Max length. We write an underscore. Again, we lock our text, write it, and we sleep. And we can just leave a, a white space and sleep again. Okay, let's try this. Well, just a heads up. Anytime you're locking a variable, make sure to initialize it first. In fact, we can do this all the way at the beginning. Just an empty string. So you're not locking a null variable. Yep, there we go. What we can do is refactor this with a separate method. Call it link. Go something here. We check the last value. It's an underscore. We set it to a white space. Else set it to an underscore just with that ternary if lock reassign then sleep and we can delete this i'll create a separate delay for the typing so the typing will be quicker and we'll give this one a cursor as well so here we check the kind character if it's an underscore we make it a space, else we make it an underscore. And we assign that to the next character. And the current character, we assign it to the, the character from the final text of that string. It's just for that effect. Okay, let's have a look at this. There we go. You can see the underscore, but it's very quick. And there's the blinking effect. There we go. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind with threading. Um, let's say we free a node. But let's say the thread is accessing some other class, which, which you might do. And in that case, you will actually get an exception being thrown. If the thread is attempting to access a node that has been freed from the scene tree. So I'll show you how to avoid this. Um, on the ready function, or whenever you initialize the thread, what you do is you take the signal and in our case, it'll be a tree exiting. That's a signal. And the C sharp syntax for assigning um, listeners to signals. You just use this um, plus equals operator. And here, we're gonna assign some method. Now you can do something like typing thread dot abort. Uh, I've done, I do this and it works fine if the threads are simple, um, but as you'll see, it is deprecated. So perhaps don't do it and write your own method to safely terminate threads. An example of this is, let's create a method here. Request terminate thread. I'm going to move this here. And here, I'm going to introduce a Sentinel Boolean that is, I'm going to say continue thread. And we're going to default that to true. Now, here, for our two loops, uh, we have two loops in this method. So first we'll check while i is less than max length and continue thread. Okay. And in our infinite loop here, I'm just gonna say while continue thread. So now we have exit conditions to safely terminate a thread. And here I'm gonna add a line just to make sure that the thread is being terminated. Okay. 
And now instead of saying typing thread abort, I'm gonna say request terminate thread. Just that delegate method reference. Here we're gonna say continue thread is equal to false. Okay, let's test this. Oh, just for your reference, I have a script on this CD node. Whenever I press space, uh, the, tape, the label gets read. So let's try that. Okay, it's typing. I'm going to press space. There we go. And you can see the thread has been terminated. Just keep that in mind. Anytime you start up a thread in C sharp, if it's referencing some other node that could leave the scene tree, connect that, sign that node's um, tree exiting method back to some safe termination method for that thread. Let's keep that in mind. Okay. Now again, this is overkill for this sort of effect because you can simply use um, the, just the visible characters property here and just toggle that. As you can see, you can do that with a tween or something, but the purpose of this video is now to show you how threads work, some things to keep in mind about locking references and terminating threads. Also to show you how to do things in an engine agnostic way. For example, you can take this code and plop it into Unity or something else and it'll, it'll just work. Whenever I try to code, I try to minimize the interface with, with the engine as much as possible. Find it's easier to work that way and not have to rely too much on the engine doing the heavy lifting. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you took something away from that. As I mentioned in the last video, devlogs will be resuming soon once I get around to recording them. If you want to see tackle any other topic, please let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you next time.